Hello, welcome to another video. We're going to talk about the indefinite integral of an irreducible rational expression. Now, it is very important to know that whenever you have a rational expression like we have as the integrand, you have to be able to split the integrand into smaller bits so that what you have in the denominator will just be a linear expression. That means you have to be able to factor it. If you cannot factor it, then you have to be able to write it as the sum of two squares or the difference of two squares. So completing the squares, which is a skill you obtained from pre-calculus, is a must to be able to solve this kind of problems. So before we solve it, and I'm going to show you what to do, I'm going to show you the long way because the long way leads to the shortcut, which you can now memorize and then use whenever you get a problem like this. But until you understand the full picture, I do not recommend using the shortcut, which is the memorized shortcut. Like this video, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, be subscribed. Let's get into it. So like I said in the introduction, this is not reducible because you cannot factor this, okay? And because it cannot be factored, we have to write it as either the sum of two squares or the difference of two squares, which we don't know which one. So let's try and do completing the squares. So remember that um, what you learned is you take this, consider, So we want to consider x squared plus x plus 3, and we want to complete the squares. Okay, right now this one is a, this expression is a rectangle. We want to make it a square. So what we're going to do is, for now, because the leading coefficient is 1, we're, we're happy. If it's not, we'll have to factor first. So maybe in the next video, I'll do one that's more complicated than this. But now I'm going to isolate this 3, and I'm going to say, what do I need to add to x squared plus x so it becomes a perfect square well what you need to add is the square of half of b you always need to add b over 2 squared which will be the same thing as b squared over 4 so b squared over 4 is what you always need to add to any expression that looks like this so in this case our b is 1 so it's going to be equal to plus, well, it's going to be 1 squared, so this is, in this case, would be 1 squared over 4, which gives us 1 over 4. So I'm going to add 1 over 4 to this expression. But remember that I had plus 3 here, so isolate it and write plus 3. But because we added 1 over 4 here, we have to subtract 1 over 4. This is how you complete the squares for any expression, as long as the leading coefficient is 1. If the leading coefficient is not 1, your first move is to factor out that term and factor everything out before you use this expression. You always add b squared over 4 to complete the squares. And if you remember, this comes in when you do your um, quadratic formula. So this is what we have. Now, how do we clean this up? Now, you see these squares that you have completed can be written as x plus b over 2 squared. You see this b over 2 that you squared, that's what it is. And remember we said our b equals 1. That's what we used. So it's going to be 1 over 2 squared. That's this expression. Plus, what is 3 minus 1 fourth? That's going to be 12 minus 1, that's 11. 11 over 4. So this expression is exactly this expression. So this expression is this expression. So we have completed the squares and now we can write this as this is now the same thing as the integral of 1 over x plus 1 half squared plus 11 over 4 dx. We have rewritten the question by completing the squares. Now, let's solve the integral. 
So like I said, I'm going to take you through the long way and then you're going to see the shortcut eventually. I want you to pay attention to the numbers you see here because in the shortcut you're going to see it. But in case the shortcut is not obvious, the long way is always guaranteed to give you the correct answer. So what I'm looking for is to be able to do this. So if I'm able to integrate 1 over, let's call this theta squared plus 1, you see d theta. The integral of this is basically equal to arctan theta. This is basically the answer. But I must have the square of something here. I must have one here and I must have one here to be able to do this. Okay, I must have one here, one here, and a square here. But that's not what I have. What I have here right now, I have one here, I have a square here, but I don't have one here. I need to get rid of this one, and in order to get rid of this or make this one, in order to make this one, you can factor out 11 over 4 all the way out from the bottom. But remember, it's in the bottom. So um, see what we're going to get. This is going to be equal to the integral of 1 over, um, I'm going to move this 11 over 4 here, or factor it out, 11 over 4. And what I have left inside will be equal to, I can rewrite this as 2x plus 1 over 2. Let's write it as 2x plus 1 over 2. I'm going to square it. But because I have factored out 11 over 4, I'm going to have plus 1 here. But it means, because this was not being multiplied by 11 over 4 before, I have to divide it by 11 over 4 too. So this is going to be divided by 11 over 4. I'm just showing you how to cancel this out, because this is the only one that gets multiplied by 11 over 4. Okay, now let's clean this up. This will be equal to this expression here. Oh, dx. I got to put dx somewhere here. Okay, now this expression here will be equal to the integral of, now let's simplify this because this looks like a problem, okay? Now because this is under the bar, this 11 over 4 can be flipped up to become 4 over 11. So I can say this is actually equal to 4 over 11. You see that? Let's keep it. 4 over 11, and then what I have here is 1 over. Now let's simplify this somewhere. Here we have 2x plus 1 squared over 4. I can write it that way. So this is going to be 2x plus 1 over 2 squared divided by 11 over 4 can be written as 2x plus 1 divided by 4. I've simplified this. divided by 11 over 4, which is the same thing as times 4 over 11. And what do I get? I'm going to get 2x plus 1 squared divided by 11. That's what this expression will end up becoming. But I just want a square. I don't want this 11 showing on its own. So I can rewrite this expression as 2x plus 1 over the square root of 11 all squared. Now, I know that if I square the top, I get this. If I square the bottom, I get this. So this is the expression that I'm going to plug in here and say this is equal to 2x plus 1 over the square root of 11 squared plus 1. That is the integral we're about to integrate. Okay, remember I said this is the long way, but... After you get used to it, pay attention to the numbers you're seeing and what happens to them. Because sometimes I've seen students trying to use the shortcut by just plugging in numbers and they got the answer wrong. Okay, so if you're not sure of the shortcut, don't use it. Just make sure you go through the process. So now, what do we do next? We've been able to make this look like this. So now, what we have to do is take this square and say let 2x plus 1 over square root of 11 be equal to 
tan theta. That's the substitution we want to make. Okay, and what does this mean? This means that 2x plus 1 will be the square root of 11 tan theta. Now we differentiate both sides. What we're going to get will be 2. This is just going to leave us with 2 dx. And this is going to leave us with the square root of 11. You don't need to touch this. And if you differentiate tan theta, you get secant squared theta d theta. So dx, because we're good. Oh, I forgot to write dx here. Come on. Because we're going to go back to replace dx, we need to isolate dx. So we know that dx is equal to the square root of 11 divided by 2 secant squared theta d theta. That's our substitution. So now, remember we said 2x plus 1 over square root of 11 can be replaced by tan theta. Now, if we look at this picture, this integral we have here, let's put this in a box. This integral we have here is equal to 4 over 11, the integral of 1 over tan squared theta plus 1 dx. So we've replaced this with tan theta. Now, instead of writing dx, we're not going to write dx anymore. We're going to write this. So I'm going to write times square root of 11 over 2 secant squared theta d theta. Nice. I can move this number back here to multiply this and see what we get. If we multiply, look, 4 over 11 times square root of 11 over 2. This 2 cancels these 2 out, so we're going to have 2 over um, square root of 11. 11. You're going to be left with the square root of 11. Remember, if you divide the square root of a number by the number, your answer is the square root of the number in the denominator. So this is what we have with the numbers. And see what is left here. This is 1 over tan squared theta plus 1 from your trig class. You know this is secant squared theta times you have secant squared theta d theta. This cancels out this so that this whole work we've been doing is just centered around 2, square root of, 2 over square root of 11 and the integration of just 1 d theta. So we can say that this is equal to, let's cut this down, so this is equal to um, 2 over square root of 11, 2 over the square root of 11, integral of just d theta. So now if we integrate this, what do we get? We get 2 over the square root of 11 times the integral of d theta is just theta plus c. We're done. Your answer is 2 theta square over square root of 11 plus c. But we did not start this work trying to do anything in terms of theta. It has to be in terms of x. So let's go back to when theta showed up. Theta showed up here. So if tan theta is 2x plus 1 over square root of 11, what exactly is theta? So let's make a triangle here. So here we go. This is theta. And we said tan theta is 2x plus 1 is 2x plus 1 opposite over adjacent square root of 11. Well, it has to be the arc tangent. There's nothing else. Is the arc tangent. So the arc tangent of this expression is our theta. So this is equal to 2 over the square root of 11 times the arc tangent of the expression that gave us tan theta, which is going to be 2x plus 1 over the square root of 11 plus c. This is the answer required. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.